Laying in the under texture for your foreground can be simple or challenging. I'm going to show you a simple way to get your ground texture in for your flora and fauna and trees and whatever else that you might put in the, your foreground. A simple way to do that is we're going to use a, this particular brush is a horsehair bristle brush. It's one and a half inches wide and as you see, it's on an angle. And the reason I like this one is because basically all we're going to need to use is this section right in here. But if we were on a regular square brush like this one, we'd have to constantly be holding our brush at an angle and make it more difficult. Whereas this one, we just go right in. You'll see as we work along here. Take a little bit of burnt armor. And we're going to start over here. We're just going to work in some. And you'll have to go back several times. Now, I've added just a little bit of paint thinner to this so that it's not quite as heavy and so that it dries a little quicker. Now, you don't have to, but it makes it nice when you do. Cause, but the nice thing about it is, if you'll notice this way, this little, like this, it also gives it kind of a, because of the bristles on the ends like that, out there in that corner, it gives it kind of a grassy, bushy effect. So you just, you can move your brush around. A little more paint here. And you just lightly tap. But as you see, it brings in It looks like you've got grasses there. And since these are kind of a background, you don't have to be too exact about it. We're not as worried about patterns as we are as we come forward. We're just basically getting our surface to accept the and then change hands so it makes it a little easier to put stuff in and just just dancing around a little bit. We're going to put other colors over the top of this so it really doesn't matter. We just want some of these laid in here real quick. Doesn't matter if it's smudged or if it's defined. We're not worried about how much colors in one spot. We'll work, we can work around that too. Alright, now we're going to come in and we're going to take a little bit of the burnt umber. We started off with raw umber. We're going to take a little bit of burnt umber and just a little bit of the raw sienna. Mix those together to make our second under layer. We're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to go in and 
lay that color in just a little bit in selective spots. We're not going to be as prolific as to where we put it. We're just going to add that orangey yellow tint. I'm going to add just a little more raw sand into the mix for over here. Because it looks like our sun's actually coming more from this away. So we want this, we're going to make this our light path right through here. And I'll explain that as we go along. And we don't have to worry about it too much right up in here. Because this is kind of the way it looks, the effect. It looks like it's kind of shadowing over a hill a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of the Naples yellow to the mix. Go back and get some more of that raw umber. I'm going to add just a hint of the yellow. I'm going to come right in here and add some more of the yellow under the coating. I want to give that little bit of that yellow hint of a tint right into there. I'm a little brighter here in the front. And you'll see why as the painting comes along. Because one of the things you got to remember is how light works. And light, depending on the painting, and since our light source is back here, the lighting is going to affect things differently and how will perceive it with our eye. It'll add more to that 3D effect and at the same time give you an opportunity to draw your viewer's eye into your painting. Now I've decided on this painting over in this area here, I'm going to put some kind of green to represent a heavier, maybe like some type of tree or something. So I haven't decided what bark or whatever I'm going to put on the limbs or anything yet, or what branches. And But I do know that there's going to be heavy greens right in here. So I don't need to worry about this one on what I'm doing next. And what I'm doing next, I don't need to clean my brush very good for. I just need to get most of this brown off of it. Okay, so what I've done is I mixed up some green using some of the lemon yellow and some Prussian blue. What we're going to do is I get it on the brush and come in here. You notice now I'm a little more selective on where and how. I put my greenery. I'm being more deliberate in the strokes because I want it kind of dark for the background and you'll see why as we go along again. Some small round ones and some big fluffy ones. And they're just going to be kind of all different shapes and shades. But this is going to remember we're going to be closer here than we are even back here. So these aren't going to be, even in the darks, aren't going to be as vivid as we are up here for our dark backgrounds because as we get closer to things things get darker in the light even during the daytime 
So even the, the darks are more apparent in the shades as opposed to just, oh, it's dark over there as opposed to green or blue or whatever. So we'll have a heavier dark colored presence in our foregrounds. And it'll be more faded the further away it is. And how dark it is, we can actually determine that this is closer than some of this. And maybe this is a larger area, so it'll be appear darker as a dark non-shape. And we'll put some... And we don't want to cover up our yellows here. We want to keep those bright. Remember, we got sunlight showing right through here as well. We're going to take our greens up onto our mesas a little bit. And it's just to insinuate that there's stuff growing on these, which there usually is. It's not really to... We're not defining the plant life back this far in our view of field of view. We're just insinuating that there is vegetation. And maybe we'll add just a little along the ridge line here. Just to kind of add a little bit of definition and change there all right then we'll get another mix i'm going to mix a little bit lighter color now of green Have you noticed I haven't, other than the clouds, I haven't used any white in the painting. And this is all in just knowing how your colors work and your shades work. Remember we were talking about that contrasting and complementary colors in an earlier video. And this is part of how you would use that. And by using those contrasting colors, you can mix. And, and I was also showed you the one about tonal values. And you're using both of those techniques in what I'm doing now. And so we're creating these colors for those tonal values. And that's what it looks like, what we're doing over here on the palette right now is why I'm paying more attention down here than I am looking there. Not ignoring you, I'm actually working on the surface below you, and we'll have to see what we can do about adding a palette cam in the future. All right, well, first off, we got our aerial perspective, and we want to carry our vegetation back a little bit. So I'm going to go in here, knock off some of the darker green on the palette. Because I don't want to add thinner. A little bit of that lighter green that we made. And I want to just kind of hint of some 
that through here. So as you can see, it, it kind of insinuates it's there, but it doesn't really accent that it's there. Take it a little bit above the skyline there. Bring it down into our... There we go there. Now I'm going to get just a little bit more yellow for this aspect that we're doing over here on this side. Because over here, we're further away, so we want this to be a little less obvious, but we want it there. And we're going to carry that right up onto the base of the mesa. You notice how this is darker than this over here. And if it's not, you go in, just add you a little bit more yellow, tone it down more. Because the other thing you've got to realize too, is we're going to see more of the brights coming through this area because this is where our sunrise is going to be the most obvious in the painting. So this is where the light will be the bright, showing the brightest on even the vegetation way back there in the background. And we just kind of carry that right up along in there. I'm going to take a different brush and I want to lift some of that out. This particular brush is a um, number eight filbert. Now watch, because again, it's the, my hog bristle brushes. See, I can go in and lift color out. So I get the effect I want, but it's not as overpowering as a dark dark blotch of the color. I'm going to move some of this around a little bit. A tiny bit to add to that. There we go. And there we have that. And that's your undertone of your vegetation. Now, let's say you want this to be um, more of a spring scene, like this one, where you've got the flowers blooming and everything along the bottom of it and everything. So, in order to get this, then what you're going to do is you're going to come back and those different shades of greens I was talking about making, you're going to come in, you're going to lay those in, and we're going to put some of those over here, and get some of this, because I know where the tree shape's going to be, and there's going to be some growth around underneath it as well. And then for these darker areas, we're going to come in, we're going to add just a little bit brighter green for those areas. Especially in this area where we want the sun to come in through. So we're going to get some more of that yellow, make it more of that green. And we'll take that up into here as well. See, it's a more vibrant. And we need a little bit of this dark green right in here. There, we got too much. So we're going to go back down and touch that up a little bit.
That's where learning how to use your brush, even the angle brush, can work to your advantage. See how even the lighter green stands out against that dark green that way. And we'll just add some hints of the yellow green in there. And we just keep adding a little yellow to our green until we get the shading that we want. But as you can see, the way I've done this, you can see your dark textures under, and your dark ground texture under your over textures of your shrubbery and such. And for in here, we're going to take a little bit of this green, and we're going to add a little bit of that green, and we're going to add and see, because this is a different green, maybe there's some like little trees over here. It's your painting, you know, make it however you want it. But you just take your light greens, put them over your darks to get the effects you want. depends on how you touch it, on what kind of effect it has. And if you're more detailed oriented, then you can go back in and these give you reference points to put your brighter and darker leaves and stuff. Yeah, if you use just the very tip bristles, it'll even make it look. See, all I'm in is just the yellow with what green's on the brush. And I can go in, just using those brush tips, I can make it look like there's flowers or blossoms on some of this vegetation. And again, it all depends on the effect you want.
And remember, stay random. You don't want, there's because there's not really any patterns in nature. And just that easy, you've now got your vegetation and you're in your foreground and you've got blooms and blossoms on it so that it looks kind of like a spring day or an early summer day at the latest in Monument Valley. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure and click the subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification so you get notified when we upload or go live. And we have some more videos to help you along on this painting over here. In the meantime, you keep creating for contentment. And most of all, you be sure and have fun.